Hey everybody, Chad Westport here. Now, you probably read the title of this video, so let me just get right to it. People like to put labels on cannabis strains like 80% indica and 20% sativa. We see it everywhere, from dispensaries to seed packaging to internet websites. But let me ask, what tape measure are they using? Like, there isn't one. These are made up numbers. They're total BS. These percentages hold very little meaning. But first, let me explain to you why it is wrong, and then I'll explain to you why these terms are used and probably will continue to be used. But let me start. So to start, indica and sativas, they're meant to indicate a genetic lineage. But today's genetics are so far from a true indica and true sativa variety that the taxonomic labels no longer apply. As cannabis was being cataloged around the world, there were two distinctly different types categorized. The distinctions included plant morphology, other characteristics such as photo period, as well as effects. This wasn't recently. This was a time ago. Cannabinoids and terpenes were not even on the radar at that time. So indica plants were short and bushy. They were quick finishing plants in mountainous regions like Afghanistan and Pakistan and Nepal and other areas around the Middle East. Sativas, they were taller. They were longer flowering and commonly found in equatorial regions. The environment there was different than the mountains of the Hindu Kush region, and therefore the plants grew differently, expressed differently, and had different effects. What we have today are actually hybrids. And, well, to go a step further, most of them are polyhybrids, but that's another conversation for another time. So to say this is a sativa or this is an indica is misrepresenting what is in front of you. You might say, well, I've heard terms like indica dominant or sativa dominant hybrid. And again, this is a bit misleading in terms of genetic origins, but it gets at the heart of why these terms are used. Consumers are conditioned to relate indica with sleepy and sedative, heavy effects, mainly felt in the body. I mean, indica equals in the couch, right? Conversely, when consumers hear sativa, they envision an energetic strain with cerebral and uplifting effects. And sativas are generally the strains that may make the harsh heart race a little too much for some people's comfort. You may have heard sativas referred to as daytime weed. But in either case, the taxonomical term is not used in a taxonomic way. It is used to describe the effects from a particular flower. And this is wrong, but we know what it means, and that's why we use it. So growers also, they often like to use terms like indica and sativa to quickly describe the morphology of a plant. Again, while technically inaccurate as to the true lineage of a plant, we know what is meant, and that's why we use it. Now, the danger with giving out percentages like 80% indica, 20% sativa, lies in the fact that everyone's endocannabinoid system is different. And, you know, who is the person that sat there and came up with these percentages? Was it a computer? Was it a dartboard? Like, how did that happen? And the reason it's important is for people who are using this plant as medicine. If these numbers are just made up and arbitrary, well, that gives people a false sense of data. They're not going to get the same result from the same, you know, different things if the numbers don't really match. So that's why it's important. Again, I love this plant. I view it as a medicinal plant. And those are the people who we really want to help. So we need to get this data in line. But I'm digressing here. Let me get back to the point of where these percentages come from, you know, is it someone tracing the long history and the lineage of every new strain? Well, okay, maybe, probably not. But what about strains where the parents are unknown? How do those get labeled? From being in the industry, truth is, it's often a person sitting around smoking pot on the couch and then assigning numbers to a strain based off of their personal experience. 
and a one-time experience at that. So this is arbitrary, subjective, and completely misleading to someone looking for solid data. So what can we do? That's a tough one. But, you know, I've heard people suggest thin leaf and wide leaf varieties. But again, in today's hybridized world, some thin leaf varieties can plant your butt in the couch, typical of effects associated with indica strains. So that's out. I've also heard drug type and non-drug type. But that loosely really is only associated with THC dominant or CBD dominant cannabis. And that leaves, you know, the whole question unanswered. What do we do with the indica sativa? So while I don't have the answer, I can absolutely tell you that this percentage stuff is BS. And it's not to be heavily relied upon at all. And we should really just stop freaking using it because again, it's made up numbers. Show me the scale that you got this 80% and 20% from, please. I challenge you. Not going to happen. But again, there is no standard measurement and the actual results may vary. So I reluctantly accept the Indica and Sativa labels because it speeds up the conversation. But we as a community need to do better for those that come after us. We need to clear this up, give them accurate information, out with the BS. So please tell me in the comment section what you think we should call these varieties. How can we give consumers the most meaningful information regarding their cannabis? Personally, I think cannabinoids and terpene testing are the best way to group flowers. But like I said, let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you for listening to this rant, and remember to always party on. One, two, one, four.